Well, welcome to a superb and splendid panel that's coming up. I'm really excited about this topic, creative learning and the future of work and education. And I'll have the panelists in a moment introduce themselves very briefly, and then we'll get into the questions and all the excitement that's coming up. I mean, it's a, just a huge topic, creative learning. You think about creativity today and how education and the work were integrated historically. I suppose it was much more by rote, you know, back in the day, as they would say. And today, creativity has crept into the equation. And a lot of that, I presume, is good. And maybe there's some negative parts to that. But the panelists who are experts on this are going to explain all of that. I have one program note. If you have thoughts or ideas to share, use the hashtag Webit, W-E-B-I-T, and share your brilliant and creative ideas. So why don't we take it clockwise and have each of the panel members introduce themselves? And I believe we're starting with Professor Sarah Nozari. And tell us where you're coming from today. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a professor at uh, the, the University of Turin, where I teach general uh, education, but above all, pedagogy of creativity. It's the only one course of uh, pedagogy of creativity in, uh, in Italy, but I think uh, also in Europe. And so, uh, of course, uh, I think that uh, creativity is very important in the process, uh, not only educational process, but also in social process. Uh, Daniel, uh, your surname pronunciation, give us that also. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Daniel Illis, and I am the VP of People at Vinted. Um, you may have, depending on where you are uh, in, in Europe, you may have seen our TV ads or YouTube ads. We are um, one of the world's largest marketplaces for secondhand fashion. Um, and so the future of work is a key topic for me almost every day as we think about how we need to set up our organization, our workplaces to prepare for it. So, um, and I'm sitting in London, so. Hope you're having nice weather. Actually, I am, yes. it's, it's Well, I'm London. near neighbors. I'm originally from Ireland, so I know London, beautiful place. <laughs> right. um, so, um, you'll see, you're in, uh, I'm a, I, I feel you're out over in Japan today, but just tell us about yourself. Okay. Hello, my name is Yoshi Hori, and I'm the founder and president of Globus University, which is the number one business school in Japan in terms of the number of enrollments of students. And I'm also a managing partner of Globus Capital Partners, which is a venture capital. I'm so happy to see you all. Great, and you're very welcome. And last but not by any means least, Saskia. Hi. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm uh, heading up the National Coalition for uh, Skills and Jobs for Belgium now for 10 years for the Commission and for the Belgian government. And as you see in my um, title, Be the Change, we all need to be the change. So it is uh, how can we get the right talent activated for the employment market, basing on a good collaboration with the education system. Great. Well, let's just get started and dig right in. Creativity, it's a big word. Uh, we Again, as I said earlier, it's not rote. You have to use the whole mental and human processes internally. Um, how important is it to the future of learning and what students need to know to be well equipped in this complex and, dare I say, ever changing world? Who'd like to come in here first? I will do if uh, if you allow me, uh, John. And and it's all about wording, uh, because some say creativity, some say we need to be innovative. It is all about future skills we need. And one of the future skills we need is that we need to try to learn to do it in a different way than we did yesterday. And I think that is the basis of, of creativity, is try to think out of the box, is to work in a multidisciplinary way is to work in a cross-sector way, is to extend and to create a new value add. So for me, being a, a digital champion, um, it has nothing to do with technology as such, which is something, an error that organizations do. Innovation is equal to creativity, which is not the case. It is a, a human skill 
but which is based on a lot of um, valid input, like diversity can stimulate creativity. So it's not, for my understanding, one thing that somebody can do alone. It is uh, the result of a lot of uh, different elements which needs to work and which will result in a very creative uh, environment um, more than in one skill or one competency that we can learn. Maybe we should go to the University of Turin, uh, Professor Sarah Nazari, your thoughts. Mm, I agree. I agree completely with uh, Saskia. Um, I think that creativity is the main cause uh, of uh, learning, the main cause of change, the principal factors of transformation. Um, it seems uh, that the creativity ha has to be recognized uh, as the really, real and uh, urgent need of uh, our century um, to solve uh, different uh, pressing problems, social problems, economic uh, problems, but also an environmental problems. I agree with this uh, uh, position, but uh, because I have a but. I think that creativity involves a pending issue. What is creativity? <laughs> what does creativity mean? Uh, this question is uh, like a brain teaser. It's a real brain uh, teaser. I can prove uh, um, this uh, pending nature um, of the problem with uh, a, a very uh, simple test. Imagine to bring um, 10 objects on your desk and uh, imagine to divide them on one side, the uh, creative object, on the other side, the non-creative object. Well, I'm sure that at the, the end of the test, we, uh, we, will find, we will find the same object on both sides. Um, the problem is that creativity as a semantic field so broad um, has to become ambiguous and sometimes contradictory. Uh, creativity can mean uh, fantasy, originality, novelty, pro uh, productivity, uh, freedom, progress, but also uh, disobeying, also uh, strategy, also transgression. Uh, we could uh, go on for many, many, many minutes. Um, uh, what that creativity uh, means uh, mean uh, is uh, uh, is not a marginal question; it's a critical question. If we if we don't define creativity, everything can be or become creative. But uh, also the opposite uh, uh, affirmation I can uh, say, because uh, if uh, uh, everything can become, be or become creative, creative, creative. it's impossible that uh, all is creative. The problem is uh, practical, uh, it's not a theoretical uh, problem. This uh, um, um, approximation of uh, the definition of creativity um, has an important consequence, a practical consequence, because it's impossible to plan uh, educational plan, uh, educational practice uh, to uh, become uh, creative. Um, I can give you a, an example. There are many, many toy um, uh, advertising. Above all, there, is a, uh, there are two particular ads about the same brain. Uh, on one hand, we can uh, listen a voice that uh, says, uh, get your feel of creativity. But there are the other ad that uh, where the same voice says, draw out your creativity. So what is creativity? It's something that you get in or get out. Uh, I repeat, uh, it's impossible to plan educational action if we don't have a clear idea of creativity. Of course, I cannot, I don't want to solve the problem, but I have an important suggestion for uh, our panel. Um, creativity has a, a dual character. It is the ability to transform and also ability to judge what is the better transformation. So 
one uh, strategy to uh, empower creativity is to practice judgment. This is my suggestion for you. Wow, you gave us a lot to think about. Uh, creativity, it's starting to have more meaning now as we go through each speaker. And it's a certain abstract character, as you, you mentioned. Daniel, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I think that really resonates. And and and, and to go back to um, Saskia's point, I think the, the way I like to think about creativity is, 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 is it's really something that um, we can foster in, in a group of people rather than necessarily a particular skill that anyone can sort of um, capture or draw out or whatever it is that we do with it, right? So I think ultimately it's about applying uh, new perspectives to an existing set of problems, right? So it's, it's, it's looking at things in, in a novel way in ways that we didn't think about looking, looking at before. And, and one way that um, and, you know, give, given my background, often this is often something I think about in, from an organizational perspective, from a company business perspective. And, and I think, um, so one great way to, to foster it in, in a group of people is, is, is by ensuring that those different perspectives are at the table. And how do you ensure that you do that through um, aiming for diversity, right? So having, having a diverse group of people at the table will... Um, in in a, in a, in in an, in an ideal world, produce a lot of different perspectives, which will give you a chance to look at problems in in novel ways, which is kind of like um, the first component. But I don't think it adds it ends there. I think um, you know you you build for diversity, you aim for diversity, but you also need to make sure at the company level, at the team level, that um, that team um, has the psychological safety to um, collaborate. Right, they they're able to ask stupid questions without fearing for consequences. They're able to challenge each other, um, have healthy conflict um, so that so that the true brainstorm moment happens, right? So that's kind of how I think about it. I think it's something that to kind of summarize rather than, um, you know, trying to look for creativity in individuals, for example, in, in your hiring process, I think, um, think about it from an organizational perspective, build the infrastructure that will unlock creativity in the group of people that um, 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 th that that you have. So that's kind of how I think about it. Anybody else want to come in here before we go on to my next question? Let me let me point out because I didn't say anything yet. Can I? <laughs> yes. Okay. I believe that people are born to be unique and creative. However, the creativity is lost during the process of mass education. So education kills creativity. And therefore the cr education creates you know, kind of like a, a standardized process of thinking. Therefore, as Saskia mentioned that they, they, we need to think out of the box because box has been created because of education. And Steve Jobs used to say, think different because we need to think differently from the standardized process. I think both worlds are important that you know, there's a th think out of the box and think different is important. However, most more, more important is that you have to think more uniquely because we are born to be unique and creative from the beginning. Therefore, what we need to do is unleash yourself and then at the same time unlearn what you learned through the mass education. I talk about that, the problem of education, also the marriage of education later on. Very good. Um, Saskia, um... Do you want to come in here? I hope you are able to get your first question in. Uh, I know that sounds odd, but we're going around in a in a circle here. Well, it's it's um, I'm happy that uh, Yoshi is um, commenting on the education system because I, I feel a little bit squeezed between Sarah and and Yoshi on making the difference between the education and the employment market. Um, I think we need to realize that every job will have to change. And um, there is a sense of urgency. Uh, we've done a study for the Belgian employment market. If we continue to work with talent and talent development as we are doing now, so I'm born, I, I go to primary school, secondary school, high school, then I work until my, in Belgium it is 67, and then I'm gonna enjoy life. And there a diploma was the key to enter the employment market. And then education was over. Now we live in a world where we have to continuously learn because 
what I learned in school, like Yoshi was saying, I need to unlearn some things. I need to learn to learn again. I need to accept that it, it's not over with learning after I've done my diploma and I've done my studies because technology will change, the society will change, the challenges will change, the way of leadership will change. Everything is changing. And so how can we get a good combination of having an adapted regular education, like I call it, and the sense of urgency I have in the employment market. In Belgium specifically, we will have in 2030, which is by way of speaking tomorrow, we will have 500,000 500, 500, jobs where we even do not have physically the bodies. So we will need to learn on, on how to manage our talents in sectors where we have too many people, reskill them in order to activate them in sectors where we need people, for example, like the education or the healthcare. So it's not a, it's not a black and white discussion. And, and even there, there is kind of creativity needed on, on how we're gonna match things. And I'm a little bit scared that only pointing it out, you know, if, if, if you point to somebody else, there are always three fingers pointing to yourself. So I'm not saying it's the, the fault of the government or the fault of the education system or the fault of the industry. I think what can we already do today in order to optimize the education part as good as possible, and sometimes it goes slowly because there is a process of getting acceptance on curriculum and those kind of things. And the need of urgency we have in the business, I think Daniel, as well as myself, the, the business is shouting to have to have talent with, with the adapted competences. So, also there we need some creativity and maybe some disruption in order to have a better mapping between what we have the habit of doing yesterday and what we need today and, and, and going forward. Brilliant thoughts. And what's wonderful about this panel is we have professionals and experts from education and the workforce. Uh, everything you've said there and you've all laid out is a great way to look and a bit deeper at the uh, where we're at with the education system and how it fits with the needs of the workforce because we've been told and has been said here there's a skills shortage around the world not in any one particular country Belgium the US can't find skilled labor we have I mean really low by historical standards, unemployment rates, cybersecurity can't get enough qualified people. Um, and I'm wondering, what's everyone's thoughts on this? I mean, has it come up on us so fast with the advances in technology, the cultural changes, even with the backdrop of COVID changing perceptions of how we do work and how do we get through this? I mean, you don't move an educational system that quickly it's kind of a lumbering giant in a way can somebody come in here on that one let me point out because of ai and robotics the skills needed for human beings will change because most of the simple tasks will be done both by ai and robotics so the skills needed for human being are those which have not been managed or which can be done by AI and robotics. What are they? One is that you need to have a passion, a passion to drive people. And it's going to be a driving force for gathering and attracting people. And second is about interpersonal skills like communication and also more about you know, well, convincing and also making and motivate people. And it's more like a leadership skills are going to be needed. Third is about more about creativity. We talked about creativity from the beginning. Therefore, we need to learn and unlearn. And also, we need to think out of the box or think without box and think uniquely and think different. That kind of creativity is needed. So skills which are going to be needed are going to be changed. Therefore, education has to be changed. And therefore, the, uh, the educational system is going to be changed. At the same time, the system of work are going to be changed. And that's what we will be discussing on this panel, which is very important. Uh, can we go to the University of Turin? Because that's a distinguished educational establishment at the third level. Uh, what, what's your thoughts, Professor Sarah? Um, I, to answer, um, I would like to tell you uh, a, a short story. Um, a man uh, worked uh, by the construction side uh, of uh, a cathedral. 
and uh, there were two um, stone cutters. The man asked, what are you doing? The first uh, stone, uh, stone cutter replied, uh, I'm piling bricks. <laughs> and the second one uh, answered, I'm building a cathedral. Uh, I know that uh, maybe with this answer, I didn't give uh, tools, but I, I would like uh, um, to argue that uh, we need uh, two principal kind of uh, skills. On one hand, uh, we need uh, cognitive skills. And I think that uh, um, Saskia, uh, Daniel, uh, also uh, Yoki, um, Told, uh, talk about uh, that uh, skills. But I think that we need also no cognitive skills because uh, um, with the no cognitive skills, uh, I would like to touch a particular uh, field, uh, the field of life, the field of soft skills, the field of character skills. Uh, so all uh, skills necessary to read and to understand the situation, uh, we, we need to have a vision on the direction. It's important to have a, a lot of skills to uh, discover, to find, to, to progress uh, to the future, but it's necessary to have a vision of the future. And so we need to improve these uh, skills. Um, I think that, uh, on my half hard, I agree with the, the, the sentence uh, that I, I listened. Uh, education kills uh, creativity. It's possible that education kills creativity, but uh, only the, the education that is focused on production of repetition, not uh, the education that would like to um, get free, get free vision of future. This is my thing. Uh, Daniel, what do you think about this whole skills shortage globally and what the educational system is offering employers? Has that become an issue in your group? Any overall thoughts? Yeah, um, look, I think I'd like to build on some of the previous concepts brought up. So one was around AI accelerating automation, therefore the skills mix needed um, in human workers will change. I, I, I fundamentally agree with that. I think um, I really agree with Saskia's point around um, sh skill shortage. I think this is particularly acute in the tech sector, which is where, where, where I operate. And so I think um, ultimately for these reasons, finding the right talent is going to get harder and harder for um, businesses, right? Um, it's already very hard. I think it's just going to get tougher and tougher. We're having all these conversations about return to the office right now after COVID. I don't think companies will have the choice, really. I think over time, they're going to be forced to look for talent anywhere they can find uh, the talent that they need because it's going to be so hard to find the right people. Uh, and so I think that because of all of these mega trends, we're going to end up in a pretty much hybrid slash remote world. Um, and, and, and I guess what I want to say is, is um, the, the, the soft skills that, that Yoshi mentions are even more important in that kind of world because in a world where all, the, all of your interactions with people are over um, Zoom or, or, or Google Meet or, or whatever it is, um, building relationships, influencing, managing stakeholders become 10x harder, exponentially more difficult. And so those skills are even more important. So all of these mega, mega trends are leading to this um, different set of skills that we need in business. Um, and, I, and I fully agree with the folks b before me that I don't think we index nearly enough on making sure that, that people that come out of the education system have those skills. And so I think that is a big shift that's going to have to happen. Um, a way, you know, um, a shift away from kind of trying to instill knowledge to, um, to really helping folks um, learn some of these key human um, behaviors. Some people call them soft skills. I think 
recently people like to call them power skills and i think that's a far better term so i i, I see it sort of that way saskia well let's pick up on daniel's thoughts there um the creativity uh job skills the lack of some qualified workers in key industries if this continues much longer I mean, what does that mean for hiring, for productivity? Do you have to compromise on who you hire? And can that realistically be done? Well, it's it's always a negative phrasing. Eh? On your question, there is compromise. I hear the war of talents. I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm an optimist. And I think we have a lot of the solutions in our hands. The only thing is, do we dare to change our way of approaching the talents? Eh? You mentioned we need to find the talent. I'm challenging and saying we need to adapt the way we recruit talent in our organizations in a completely different way. We have done 300 million, a uh, screening of 300 million vacancies worldwide. Now, shortly said, and just to make an image, I see vacancies where they ask somebody with um, 37 years of AI experience, being a woman, and younger than 26 years. It's, it's a little bit like trying to find an elephant which can sing, dance, is yellow, 200 gram, but still look like an elephant. People need to realize that that kind of a profile you will not find anymore because there are no curriculum. AI didn't exist 37 years ago. So I would say let's be creative in the way we, we map are competences, and there is for me a huge difference between skills and competences and potential. HR in an organization, me also as a business leader, I need to define what kind of skills and competences do I need? And do I have them in my organization? Not in a physically body. Do I have enough creativity? Do I have enough people with capabilities of multidisciplinary working? And do I have technology uh, experience if it is digital or green I, I, I will need a bio architect nobody knows what that what that beast will do but we know that if you want to go for the sustainable society and and cement is using more co2 than mm. if how do we handle the potential we have in our organizations and in our society and not necessarily the ones who have the diploma of having been confirmed what they what i was supposed to learn in the past yeah a very interesting answer and a lot to think about that um education the need for education um Let's move on then in very broad terms to this whole, I mean, third, fourth, fifth industrial revolution. I'm losing track of what iteration we're at at the moment. People are talking about the metaverse and we have digital innovation side by side with creativity. That's the generation of the youngest in our school system and in the um, markets. What's your, your overall thoughts about that? digital technology innovation and, and the workplace creativity anybody want to come in here can i talk yes yes well, i think we, we have been discussing about skill shortage but it's not labor shortage mm. so what i would like to argue that educational system is not doing a good job in reskilling the labor markets therefore skill shortage happens why is that i was in davos and they talked about reskilling we used to need reskilling only about once in a decade because technology was not advancing so much faster. But now because of technological advancement, uh, reskilling is needed once in three years. And therefore educational system has to catch up with the technological advancement because what we have to teach in business school, let, let me say, has changed because the concept of marketing has changed, and organizational structure has changed, strategy and business model has changed. However, if the educational system is teaching the old days marketing and finance and strategy. It doesn't do any good job at all. So we need to come up with a new wording. We came up with the wording called technobate, technology plus innovate. Ugh. We created technobate. The new concepts and new ways of teaching and the new educational system is needed. And also new curriculum is needed. And then once in three years, you have to change the curriculum. That's how fast the, the uh, world is changing. And then also the business is changing. And therefore, 
labor shortage is not happening, but skill shortage because of educational system institution, including us, have to do a better job in doing that. A great point of distinction. And so reskilling is a key driver here to for a better future, as it were. Uh, anybody else want to come in? Well, I, I, I appreciate uh, Yoshi's remark, but I also want to say industry has also a major um, element in the in the solution. Uh, again, I do not want to point or to the education. I think we also in the industry have to learn that um, there is a very important aspect that organizations will have to report on non-financials going forward in the future in, in, in Europe. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, endlich. Yeah, now finally we are taking not only the financial results as a barometer of good functioning of organization, but also the non-financials. How do you manage inclusivity? How do you manage your talent? What is the investment do you do to get a good welfare, but also a good well-being be between organizations? And I think COVID and my heart is with all those who have been physically or mentally impacted by it. But it was a sense of, of, of we don't have any choice anymore. Uh, we, we can't give education remote. And suddenly we were all capable of doing it, good or bad, and some, some had some issues. We all could work hybrid, but still the old managers are managing the performance of their people on the number of hours they are in the office. And that's why they want to have their people back as soon as possible. Not because the people want, but because they were trained to do a controlling leadership and saying, I can measure on spreadsheets and PowerPoints. So it is, it is, I think we have all use cases now on the table. It is not one or the other. I think, yes, there is a valid remark on the education, but there is also a valid remark on the way we manage companies. And there I'm very optimistic in the reporting of non-financial. And there is also a, a way of measuring the performance of organizations. And let me just, um, give you an example. I've been CEO myself. If I laid off people, then the financial cost of that layoff, I can book as an investment accounting-wise. If mm -hmm. I want to invest that same amount in skilling, reskilling, or upskilling of my team, I need to book it as a, a cost this quarter. Now, can somebody tell me why in 2022, when everybody is shouting that we need right people and the right competence and those kind of things, there is not somebody allowing us. We can book software as investments. We can book hardware as an investment, but people are still a cost. And there, there is somewhere also we need to dare to, 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 to make a new accountancy rule, which allows me to also handle that as an investment. And then you will see a behavior where the knowledge of the education system can help to help me as an entrepreneur. How do I skill? How do I reskill? How do I upskill? But it will suddenly really take things seriously about the subject we are talking about. Let me just add in here anybody who wants to share some thoughts, comments, ideas, use the hashtag Webit, W E B I T. Daniel, uh, kind of gone off on a, a limb here, as it were. I know, I read recently that they're experimenting with the four-day work week in parts of the UK. I'm just wondering, is that a trend? But more broadly, it, it speaks maybe to the creative process, to the life work experience and balance. Yeah. Um, so do, sort of what, what are you asking? Sorry, whether this is uh, whether yeah can you just repeat? well well i guess my, my 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 question was it was very interesting to read that they're piloting a program in the uk um on introducing the four-day work week down from five days and i i i guess there's several things come out of that they're going to probably measure performance of how the employees um take hold of that and what it does or does not do positively negatively for the individual employers so my broader question to that is is that sort of a backdrop drop to this whole trend of where we're trying to better the work environment mm -hmm. better the work experience uh creativity i mean we're in the age of ex experimentation to some degree because of the rapid pace of change yeah 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 so look let, let, let me start by um explaining sort of where i think we're headed so 
Um, again, um, when you look at um, when you look at the future, where um, we're we're not able to retrain folks as fast as um, as as uh, investment and innovation takes place, I think we're going to have to. Um, it's going to be harder and harder to to um, uh, reskill talent internally, but also to find the talent. But per, per Saskia's point earlier, so I think. Over time, we're going to have to compete with a lot more companies that are choosing to have a four-day work week. Uh, I think over, over time, it's going to become more and more difficult to do that unless you also have a four-day work week. Uh, and so I do think that is probably the direction we're headed. If I, if I look ahead um, 10 years out, I, I do think it's, it's going to be, if not the norm, certainly a, a, a very large uh, part of um, organizations are going to be doing this. What do I think about it? I think that ultimately um, the fact that we work five days a week for the most part is a little bit of a coincidence, a historical coincidence that just sort of happened and, and some someone started doing it once and so everyone else did it. Um, is it the best way to harness human um, um, creativity and productivity? I don't know. I think data will tell. More and more companies do this. There's this, this study happening in the UK now. We'll learn about how folks um, react to that, how productive they become Monday to Thursday or, or whatever, uh, whatever days they do. And we're, we're just going to have to see what we do with that. Right. Uh, I think, um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's kind of how I see it. I think COVID was a great catalyst for this because folks that, you know, work from home, um, tend to overwork, um, much of the data seems to suggest that folks tend to overwork for majority of the week and then tended to take it easier a particular day, perhaps Friday, perhaps another day, if, if that was, you know, if their circumstances so uh, required. So actually, I think COVID may, may be showing that the way we actually, most of us do our best work isn't this like strict five-day uh, situation that we're so used to, but actually perhaps there's a better way. So in summary, um, I think it's a really interesting experiment. I'm dying to see the results of it. Um, and I think if the data is compelling enough, I think we're going to see a major shift uh, toward it over time. That's really interesting. I don't think we've gotten quite there in the United States where I am today, Daniel, but we'll watch for the results. Anybody, any general thoughts about that before I move on to diversity, gender balance, which is on our agenda today? Maybe, Maybe uh, just a point to link to the to the diversity part. I'm, I'm I'm I had a discussion with with young people. I have a lot of discussions with young people, and um, to the discussion four days or five days, it's a little bit a discussion of yesterday because then we we had a work week ex expressed in days, but they would like they would like to work on projects. And so what is then a day of working? If you're working on a project, they ask me myself, why can't I work with two competitors at the same time? I mean, I can share a lot of additional experience. I would, I would, work, would like to work for, for different organizations, working on different projects based on my potential, my interest, my, my, my talent. So I'm, I'm hearing a little bit, we started up with, with the word creativity. I'm hearing a little bit um, a, a kind of a way of thinking the world like like we're, we're still going to run harder. We're still going to run faster, but we're still running exactly the same way and we can't do it anymore. I mean, people are tired. And if it's now expressed in five days or in four days, if you do not change fundamentally the way you see employment, then, then, then you will pull on the elastic, and you know if you pull on an elastic at a certain moment, it breaks and it goes flat in your face, and that's what I'm a little bit scared of. It's still a discussion of yesterday, done by people of yesterday, and not necessarily based on on how the world of tomorrow uh, looks like. I think it's the same, like a four days or five days. You know, it's still yesterday, thinking in a way that the laborers may contribute time. For devoting time, it's not a time-based salary any longer. It's more about knowledge. It's more about creativity. It's more about performance and output. It doesn't matter how long you work for. And also, I don't, you know, I'm kind of skeptical about the world of work-life balance because it's not work versus life. Work is a part of life. And then the work itself will create community, make friends, and also harness uh, the ability and also self-actualization, sense of achievements, 
And then at the same time, you, you will be able to make friends and it's a part of life. So and then at the same time, we don't contribute our time or devote our time for the work. And because of, more and more COVID, because of COVID, we have more remote access and we have more flexibility in terms of working hours. And therefore time is not the matter any longer. It's more about the creativity, knowledge and also performances. Well, can I add something, please? Um, listening your positions, uh, listening your argumentations, I, I was uh, reflecting. And um, I'm uh, a little bit worried for uh, the audience, because uh, um, the audience could imagine that there is a distance between uh, uh, theoretical position or practical position. Um, I think that uh, we um, have uh, two different point of view, but the position is the same. We, we, are, we are on the mountain of, uh, <laughs> of creativity, but we have uh, um, two different focus. Um, two different focus, but better two different questions. My question is why? Uh, the question is, uh, what is the reason? Uh, what is the direction? And uh, the other point of view concerns uh, other question. How is possible to arrive to the aim? How is possible to, to find a faster solution to make uh, uh, something? It's important that we uh, recognize that uh, these two different questions um, have to go together because uh, the why with, without the how, um, it's impossible to realize something. The, um, the, the how without uh, uh, why hasn't uh, direction. So uh, this is my feeling for the, the audience. Imagine these uh, two different point of views together. Why right. and how? It's, it's very important for a real, a real and the human change of the future. Well, we're running out of time quickly, but we will try to get two things in uh, diversity, uh, gender balance, creativity and the future of work and education. I'm going to play a little bit of hardball, if you will. Um, but your thoughts, uh, have we got it right? Have we gone too far? It's a very political, polarized question, something we should just hire people on merit. All your thoughts here. Let me jump in. The power has shifted to individuals and then therefore work for talent is happening. If individual can decide which company to work for and the compensation can be decided by individuals. So if the company do not provide diversity, do not provide flexibility, do not provide any of those like uh, that you mentioned about, and then therefore the individual will just simply leave, the company will not grow any longer. Therefore, the time is going towards individuals and the company has to adjust itself. Great. Uh, Daniel, do you want to come in here so we can get in a final question? Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. And I think um, it's silly for this to become political because ultimately we have tremendous uh, amounts of data that tells us that as long as you um, build a diverse organization, and you 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 foster the infrastructure and the environment that is going to allow that diversity to thrive. Then you're going to do better. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and people have caught up to this, and people want this when they join a company. Uh, to Yoshi's point, and if they don't get it, they'll leave. And so, it's like sure you can be as political as you want, but ultimately, um, you know, it's it's just a fact of life. And I think everyone's going to eventually catch up to it. Right, um, Saskia, really quickly. Only this, we need everybody as long as possible with a lot of passion and positive energy active on the employment market. And today uh, we do not have enough women and we do not have enough youngsters and we do only have men with blue suits and brown shoes in some organizations, which is not, not enough. So we need it. If it's not for a, for a non-financial reason, a sustainable reason, then you should do it for an economical reason. So less of the brown shoes and blue shoes and uh, more of what you're any saying comparison, there. Any comparison with people listening to this call is obviously completely by accident. 
now, Professor uh, Nazari, real quickly, and then could I'm going to ask each of you to tell us real quickly what you're doing in your own organizations for the future of work and uh, creativity and education, if we can squeeze it in. Yes, we try to exercise uh, critical thinking. The solution is the th critical thinking. The future could be changed uh, in a better way, only exercising uh, critical thinking of uh, children, but also of adults. <laughs> Okay, uh, quickly, what are you all doing in your institutions, companies for creativity, the future of work and learning and bettering society? Professor, do you want to just quickly come in there? I know you're in an educational sector. Okay. Is it me? Uh, you'll see you can come in because somehow okay. we lost a connection there. Come in real okay. quickly there if you got my question. I'm disrupting the status mm. quo of educational system and changing everything. And then changing the business school to become more like a software IT company because the future of education is going to be based on more online and AI based. Very good. And then your colleague in the university, Professor Nazari. Yes, um, um, our university uh, is uh, working without, uh, with, with the other uh, universities above all of Europe, and we are trying to um, create create <laughs> create a race between us for exercising, uh, I said before, critical skills. It's very important that we are able to uh, judge to. Um, to recognize the better way in every situation, because there are not uh, receipts, there are not uh, rules. It's necessary that in situation, everyone is able to find the better solution for all. Daniel, real quickly. Yeah, so it's a pretty broad question. So it's hard to give sort of a quick one, but, but you know, so, Back to the sort of original point, what is creativity? Creativity is, 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 is creating the infrastructure to help people come up with novel ways to solve problems effectively. So how do we do that? How do we help people thrive? Well, we, we, we do it through building um, human-centric, um, um, you know, we used to call it performance management. These days there are better better terms for it, but we, we, we build, we build human-centric feedback systems. We design of workplaces and 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 uh, in in such a way that it caters to all sorts of working preferences to make sure people can do their best work we do things like um, learning budget that people can really um, deploy and, and reskill themselves internally to kind of solve the problem we've been talking about for so long we focus on diversity and inclusion we focus on um, leadership training so that that leaders can foster the kind of psych safety that you need for that diverse uh, environment to thrive, all of these different things, a million things, but really all with the same focus, help the folks thrive. Saskia in Belgium. Uh, what I try to do is to um, create a culture where everybody is daring to dare for tomorrow with, with the vision of tomorrow and to sensibilize that we all need to be the change. It's not one responsibility for, for somebody, we all need to accept that our role, our responsibility, our competence, or the, the way of viewing to the employment market or the education will be different. And if we if we link the dots, because we have huge good initiatives in every country or in every region, if we are capable of getting those ecosystems together, I think we already have a lot. But there is a sense of urgency. We need to start yesterday. Great. Well, thank you all for a superb panel on creative learning and the future of work and education. Thank you again.